JavaScript. In this video, the approach is going to be that maybe you don't need to write JavaScript, but you would be interested in being able to read a general idea of what JavaScript code is trying to do. So let's dive right into the basic syntax of how the language works, and then we'll go through an example of how you might read a very small JavaScript application. So first thing to understand about JavaScript is that it has variable declarations that can be made with three different words. So there's var, let, and const. They are followed by whatever variable name you want to create. So zero in this one, one in this one, and then variable three. I've included this one because it's important to understand that you can also use numbers in variable names, and that doesn't cause a problem. Uh, whenever you create a variable, you will pretty much always be initializing it with a value. So that's what the equal sign is here. This is not equality, this is assignment. So if you see var zero equals zero, the number zero, then what we're really saying is we're creating a variable called zero, Z-E-R-O, and we're assigning it to the value, the number zero. Here we're doing the same thing. We're creating a variable called one. It's being assigned to the string of characters, zero, uh, O and E. And then we're creating a variable, variable three, and we are assigning it to the value true. JavaScript has uh, different types. So up here, you'll see this is a number. I mentioned this is a string. And this is true or false, which is called a Boolean. So what variables allow us to do is pass around values that are held by just the name of the variable. So right now we have variable three equals true. It's actually shorter if we were to just pass around true, but you could have something that is say a function or an, a large string, like if we had a bunch of just nonsense, we would not want to have to type this in every time. Uh, we instead could just pass it around with variable three, and it would always give you this value that it's assigned to. So as I mentioned, JavaScript has functions. Functions, once they're called, will run to completion. Uh, so in this function, we are creating a variable called our function, and we are assigning it to the value of function, which is going to run through from top to bottom and return three plus seven. So this is how you call a function. You put the, the function's name, followed by open and close parentheses, and this will return a value of 10. So if I was to put a, if I was to create a variable here called let's, uh, let's say 10 equal, and then I were to use 10 elsewhere in my application, that would hold the value of 10, because that's what was returned from the invocation of our function, which returned three plus seven. You can also see functions that are called without a explicit variable declaration in a variable statement. This is called a function expression. And that's where you put function as the first word. There's no assignments operator, which is the equal sign. And instead, you just put the name of the function that you want to create. Uh, after that, uh, after the function keyword, you're going to have your open and close parentheses. Sometimes, and quite often actually, you will see uh, parameters up in the function declaration. And so these are placeholders for whatever you pass into the function. So up here, we can pass in anything. But when we call our other function down here, we are passing in three and doing a comparison to say, is three equal to five? If it's not, that will be false. So the test will then become the value false when it actually gets in there. So we will be saying if test, it'll do a, tr a true or false coercion on it. Test will become false like that. And so because this will be false, it will skip that first block and it will go to the second block and the test was false. 
if I passed in three equals three, get passed up into here, this would be true, be true, and if true, it'll run that first block of code, so it'll say test was true. Next up, we can also produce objects. So this object I've just called our object, and you create an object with open closed uh, mustaches or curly braces, whatever you want to call them. And the general syntax for an object is a property name, followed by a uh, colon, followed by whatever value you want to pass in. And just like variable declarations up here, these can be anything. They don't have to be strings. So if you create a person uh, object, you can have a property name, and I put my name there, property age, and you'll see this is a number. It's not a string, so I could do it like that and make it into a string, but it's just a number in this case. And so objects will hold all these key value pairs, and then you can use them later just like variables. They're kind of like uh, boxes around variables. So you could say, you, you could access the number 23 in person by going person.age or by doing person uh, square brackets with the string age in there, which will look for the property name of age. So it'll go into person, look for the property of age, and give you whatever values associated with it. And that's both 23. You can also add properties to an object. So in this case, I'm doing person.lastName and assigning it the value calbank. And so now, from this line going forward, person will also have the property last name, and it will have the value of calbank. And finally, this is, like I said, just a very broad sweeping generalization of how you can read some JavaScript code. But functions can also call other functions, and you'll see this a lot. So if we create a function that is called function calling function, we give it the value of a function, and we return our function, which was the function that we created up here. Then the function, uh, our function, was returning 3 plus 7, which is 10. So when we get the result of our function, it's going to be uh, re essentially replacing this guy. So it would look like that. And so now it's just function calling other function is going to return 10. And so if we were to invoke that function, we would get 10. So it essentially just works its way through the, the call stack until it can give you a uh, value in return. So this is some code I made for a recent video. And we're just going to follow, our, follow through it and see if we can understand a little bit about how you can read JavaScript code. So first things first, we can see that these are all function declarations, but none of them are being called. And so we work our way all the way through. And we see, all right, this is the only function uh, call that we have in this document. So what that means is we can say, all right, Read locations being called, no parameters are being, or no arguments are being passed in. So let's just look for read location. Go up to read location. See what read location is doing. We see that it's doing, don't worry too much about this if you're just trying to learn it. This is something from Node. Uh, but we're seeing what it's doing. It's making a request to data.json and it's passing in what's called a callback. And if you're brand new and you're just trying to learn JavaScript, this is going to be super confusing, but it's a common pattern, so just have a general sense of what this means. When you pass in a callback, that is going to be the function that handles whatever response we get from read file. So we go up to handle response because we see that's the next thing that is going to be used in this program. So handle response, we come up here. It's receiving a couple parameters, which are either an error or a response. And if there is an error, again, this will be coerced to either be true or false. So if error, then it'll throw a new error. If there is no error, or error in this case would be null, it will be coerced to being false. So this block of code will be skipped. And then we will get down to the next line. But if we hit, I, sh I should also point out, 
if there was an error, throw new error will automatically kick us out of this function, so these lines won't be run. But if there is no error, then this line of code is skipped, and it won't throw us out of the function, so these lines will be run. And so next up, we do some parsing of a response object, which doesn't really matter too much uh, for you guys. And then we're doing the read message call. So we now know that read message is the next place that we have to look, and we're passing in a parameter. So we head down to read message. Read message takes that takes that, uh, or sorry, passes in an argument, takes that parameter, and passes it into another call uh, with another call back. So we see what the callback is, it's handle message, so we follow that line of thinking up to handle message. Again, error response, if there's an error, it'll kick us out of the function by throwing an error. Otherwise, it will run this line of code, which is print message. And so now we can say, all right, print message is the next function that's being called. Let's head down to print message. We can look at print message and see that it is a function that takes a parameter of a message that was passed in up here. And then it'll output it to the console, which essentially just means that we can actually see it. So what I hope you can get out of that is basically what you want to look for is an initial call and then just follow that call stack as far as you, as far as you need to until you can see the general process that's happening in a program. So you go read location, and we went, all right, cool. Next thing that gets called is handle response. So we went up to handle response. Next thing that we saw that was called was read message. And if the programs are designed properly, you can, or I shouldn't say designed properly, if they're named well, then this will be fairly easy to understand. You understand that you're a function called read location. It's looking in this file. So if we go to that file down here, it has a, it, is a JSON object, so it looks just like the JavaScript objects we saw before. And it has a location property with a string uh, value of file.txt. And so what we can tell from that is that whatever we get back from this response, we are then going to be handling with handle response. And so we can just follow that up to the next level, and we'll do the same thing here. Handle response, what would that be doing? Well, I'm guessing it's going to handle a response. And then what might read message do? Well, it's probably going to read the message. And then print message is probably going to print the message. So if you have a general sense of how to follow the code through, and if the functions are named decently, they're not just called foo, bar, a bunch of nonsense like that, then you can have a pretty, pretty good sense of Maybe not how a program works, but what the goal of the program is. So I hope that gave you a super general idea of what uh, you can do to understand what's happening in a JavaScript program. This is a super fast rundown of the syntax. And again, this will not make you an expert at writing JavaScript, uh, but hopefully it'll give you a little bit of an idea of how it's written so you can understand, if you look at a block of code, what it might be trying to do. All right, hope you learned something. Bye.